So I'm going to be completely honest. The way this shirt has like the wrinkled collar reminds me of this like commercial. It was like super stupid where the guy like sits down at a dinner table and his shirt is like his collar is kind of wrinkled. And the girl is just like, ew, your collar's wrinkled? I bet your dick is like trash. <laughs> and then and then the guy's like, oh, with the most fucking like beta ass look on his face. He's like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to iron my t-shirt. Anyways, sorry, that's just all I could think about when I put this shirt on, but it's, it's my last shirt, and I, I can't afford uh, laundry. Hey guys, this is a very expensive graphics card. This is a Quadro GP100 from NVIDIA, and its release price was somewhere in the realm of 10,000 US dollars per unit. Pricing information for Quadro cards going back is a little iffy because they weren't really sold to the average consumer, but that's roughly what I see them for going back to that date. So about $10,000 this graphics card went for, and oh man, is it not meant for gaming. No one should ever game on one of these. And you know, I'm sure people have, but probably just to test their game that they're making and their new renders, not to actually play video games on it. So in today's video, we're gonna play video games on this $10,000 professional workstation graphics card that was never meant to make its way into any sort of gaming computer. But first, a little information about this card. Then we'll get into the benchmarks and all that. So. This is a Quadro GP100. So what's special about this card is that it released during the Pascal generation, you know, with like the 1080 Ti and stuff like that. And it has the same CUDA core count, 3,850, 3,000, 3,580, 3,584, is that it has the same 3,854 CUDA core count as the GTX 1080 Ti. It has 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. Now that is high bandwidth memory that is baked directly into the GPU package and is right on the die. So there's no GDDR6 packages or anything around the card. Everything is on board the die or the central package, whatever. You can kind of see the separation, but you get the point. Anyway, so this is a 16 gigabyte card with, again, super high bandwidth memory. And at the time, HBM2 was the fastest memory you could get for a graphics card. So that's what caused this to be so expensive. And fun fact is HBM2 is one of the huge reasons for the Vega generations of graphics cards from AMD just completely failing is that they were so expensive because HBM2 cost so much. But anyways, that's besides the point. This doesn't have the insane CUDA core count of like the GTX Titan XP, where that had the entire 3,840 CUDA cores unlocked on the Pascal GP102. Wasn't the fucking die called GP102? PG. PG? Dude, I don't fucking know. Dude, I'm making this shit off the top of my head. Either way, uh, 3,000... 3,800, 3,840 CUDA cores was the maximum. This didn't have it, but it's brother, the Quadro P6000 with 24 gigs of GDDR5X or GDDR5, one of the two, I don't know, had it. But again, so besides the point, man, I'm rambling. Now, how do I have one? Well, despite the fact that they go for, you know, almost $1,000 still on eBay, I picked this up for about 200 bucks uh, a couple months ago because uh, it was listed as kind of semi not working, where they said, oh, it crashes under load, and no, it doesn't. Now, after installing this card in my gaming system, it did cause a RAM error that I couldn't solve without removing two sticks of RAM, and one of those sticks does not work at all in any system. But besides that, the card works completely fine, at least for my testing. I even ran Furmark on it, did a burn-in test, and yeah, it works. Now, the shroud design kind of resembles more of the Maxwell generation cards versus the Pascal generation shroud, which I, the only thing I have here is a Titan V, which technically isn't Pascal, but it's got the same shroud type. This has a lot more like, I don't know, shapes, I guess. Whilst the Maxwell older cards have the more simpler squarey, squarish er shroud. But either way, just something I thought I would know. So without further ado, let's pull out the test bench and see how this works. Thankfully, oh, it's stuck on the power. Ah, I've got a, a nice test bench just sitting under the desk. 
that's where it always just sits. Oh God. So the fun thing is it's kind of a workstation slash server card. So it's got the eight pin PCIe connector on the back. I originally thought it would be EPS because some of these cards are very high power, but nope, it is PCI Express. Now in typical YouTube fashion, I, I, I'm hooking that up solely for show. I've already done the testing and I'm not even gonna plug this in. But whoa, it looks cool. It is a cool looking card. Now, when I did the testing, I did have a GTX 1060 installed because for some reason, this test bench just likes having a GTX 1060 or else the system just doesn't work. I don't know why. It doesn't do anything. The driver's not even loaded half the time. It's disabled, but it just needs a 1060. None of the other cards do it. I don't know. Not really my issue, though. So anyways, let's get into the gaming. Now, here's Task Manager. It just shows you, you know, yeah, there it is, 16 gigs of VRAM, which is sick. So getting into the games, I did a, a nice, uh, interesting suite of games here, starting with Ready or Not, just get the graphically intensive one right out of the way. And at max settings, 1080p, we get a solid 60 to 100 FPS. It, it varies throughout the entire map, but I, I'm using one of the older maps because they're more optimized. The newer ones just aren't optimized, so you can't even use the old GPU on most of them. And yeah, we have plenty of VRAM, so that's not an issue. Sometimes it is, especially for our 6 gig 106 or Especially for our 6 gig 3060 we tried out uh, a little while ago, but for this card, there's no issue. It just chews through these frames, and it is a great gaming experience. I don't care what anyone says. I gotta be honest, the people who go like, Quattro's can't game at all, it's impossible, are some of the dumbest people on the planet. Yes, they're not meant for gaming, but <laughs> it's, it's fucking GPU acceleration. It's fucking 3D task, okay? A render card can render a game. It's not that hard, you know? If it can make a game, it can render a game. Like, it's it's common sense. People tell me that the RTX A4000 is going to perform like a, a, a GTX 1050 for gaming. I'm like, what is wrong with you? There should be an IQ test to comment on my videos. Not because I'm smart, just because you're dumb. So anyways, yeah, re Ready or Not works great. So that's cool. Moving on to, let's pick a game. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Yep, why not? This is a, a game that came out within the realm of, of a few years of this card. And yeah, we get over 300 FPS, 1080p max settings. I, I would, I figured. Now our CPU, our 7 core uh, Intel Extreme Edition CPU, is overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. So we do, we're not going to get a CPU bottleneck on any of this. And yep, 300 FPS with the GPU under full load, low VRAM usage at 1080p. But yeah, no, this uh, it crunches these frames, so we get a nice gaming experience. And can I just say, the KSG with the weaponized 115 camo on this game is still one of the sexiest things I've seen in my entire life. I mean, man, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's such a beautiful gun. It's such, such a beautiful game for its time. 2012 this game came out. Man. I'm like, I'm like looking at it from where I'm sitting. Cause I have it, I have it up in the in, on the editing PC while I'm recording this. Cause I, I have recorded the gameplay like a week ago, when I was sitting and recording gameplay for a bunch of cards. So, anyways, yeah, I thought that's yeah, that's great. That's just epic. So let's move on to uh, let's do Rainbow Six Siege and then Red Dead. Okay, Rainbow Six Siege high preset with the full resolution scale enabled, 1080p, and we get over 200 FPS. So not only is this card great for just normal graphically intensive games, but it's also great for competitive gaming. And I think every competitive gamer should have a Quadro in the system because it would really piss off some people, especially Nvidia, who would, I've made my express intention of pissing off every single person at Nvidia one way or another. So, you know, we're going to keep trying. It's not about gaming on their more expensive Quadro cards so that professionals can't have them. Fuck you, professionals. Anyways, yeah, it works great. I mean, it had a good run here. Again, smooth, no frame drops. So sometimes you might expect frame dips and stuff with the with the drivers of these cards. But nope, I got nothing, man. This is a great gaming card. And I think Quattro's are the best gaming cards. They were meant for gaming. Honestly, I think they were actually purpose-built for gaming. I think they're backwards. I think GeForce cards are for professionals. Um, and and the, the nice sexy quadro cards with the double triple amounts of vram they're for me they're all for me give them to me now send them to me also i'm gonna sell this on ebay because i'm broke any house any klaus 
I'm moving on to Red Dead Redemption. Now, I actually played this for like 30 minutes because I was having some fun with the train on it. So, anyways, we're on Red Dead Redemption. And uh, this is a funny game. Uh, it runs the same on every card I put in the system. It, it defaults to like the same uh, like high settings preset at 1080p and it always just runs at about 60 FPS. And this is with VSync off for sure. But it's 50 to 60 FPS. The game looks great. And I can just run through this train being a menace to society as I do. And I'm going to leave this gameplay up while I ramble a little bit because it's just good gameplay. But anyways, yeah, so Red Dead Redemption 2 runs fine. And yeah, this card, it's not meant for gaming. But can it game? Oh yeah, it can game. It's a GTX 1080 Ti, slightly power limited, with 16 gigabytes of ultra high bandwidth, super speed memory. VRAM, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's insane. It's an insane graphics card. And it's sexy as hell. So yeah. It's great. I love it. I'm just happy to have it. I'm sad because I basically know that I have to sell it because right now they go for like $600 to $1,000 and I paid $200 for it. And after this video, I, I don't really have a use for it that makes sense outside of like, oh, I could build a new editing rig or I could build a new virtualization server. But this card is not necessary to any of that. You know, I have... I have fucking titan v's sitting around that i can use so yeah unfortunately i have to um i have to get rid of it but it is a fun card it is a cool graphics card anyways hope you guys kind of enjoyed this little video i love gaming on invaded expensive cards if you have any suggestions for cards that are are to the point where they shouldn't be gamed on so hard that i might get in legal trouble for we're going to shoot for that next time. So if you have any suggestions for anything that will just really piss off NVIDIA and uh, any other idiot out there, send them over. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.